What's up, guys? Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, coming to you live from my office. Um, something a little bit different today. I'm going to be trying out a screen share kind of thing, kind of like a on the whim a little show. So if this is something that you enjoy, just remember, hit the like button. But usually all this stuff in my channel is pretty good stuff. Let's uh, let's be fair. Oh, and uh, here we go. Now the settings are going frozen. Let's get back to normal camera. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me make sure. And I do want to do some screen share stuff. I want to uh, shout some people out that come in through the feed if they do. And uh, let's take a look here. So we got one viewer in the room. Hey, what's up? You can chat right here in YouTube. What's up? I'm putting that as a comment. If you have any questions about vintage RC stuff, then um, yeah. But as I stated before, this is just a test run kind of show. Um, if you do like these screen share type of things, then uh, you know, make sure to hit the like button. So as you guys or gals may not, may know or may not know, um, you know, aside from bikes and outdoor clothing, um, shoes and all that kind of stuff, I really like RC stuff, and I've been like that for like the past 12 years so um, I started out with nitro RC stuff well let's, let's take it back from the beginning when I was a kid you know I used to mess around with like uh, Nico and Tyco stuff and I always wanted more and more cooler Nico and Tyco remote control cars but uh, my parents just would never buy it for me so I did get a couple but for the most part um, I spent a majority of my childhood like looking at everyone else play with their own Nico and Tyco toys and sometimes even hobby grade RC 10 type stuff so um, this right here is just gonna be a show you know you can break RC up into so many different segments that it could get really overwhelming in one show it's impossible impossible to do it on one show so hopefully today on this show I'll just show you a couple bolos like nothing crazy we're gonna go through two brands only okay we're gonna go through Tyco and Nico as a vintage brand and the kind of whole, like the bolos and the stuff that I look for when I hustle these brands. So um, that's pretty much it. What's going on? Apple Pear, Ben H. What's going on? Jose Jimenez. We have Sandy K, David Nichols, Timothy Grapp. Um, so that's good. Timothy Grapp says, I know nothing about RC stuff. That's perfect. That's the right kind of comment I want to see. So the good thing about RC, or I should say, I've never lost money in RC, whether it comes to vintage remote control kind of stuff, hobby grade remote control stuff, current day remote control hobby grade stuff, um, crawler bodies, motors, servos, like I haven't lost money in any one of these things. So to me, it's a very profitable segment, but you got to know what you're kind of looking for. Now, the good thing about remote control, vintage remote control RC, okay, non-hobby grade, which means, let me just uh, say what that means versus the other thing. So a hobby grade remote control car is always the kind of remote control car that's going to cost more okay it's the one that sometimes and even back in the day would have to be built um these are items nowadays you can get them built or which is called rtr ready to run or you can get them um in kit versions okay but these are things that you know you see jumping on all over the videos on youtube and all that kind of stuff that can take abuse they're for competition st type stuff and dirt tracks you know racetracks, all that kind of stuff. Those kind of cars can put, be put through a lot of abuse, but typically um, it's dealing with a lot of uh, interesting aluminum parts, You know, some, sometimes carbon fiber parts, very high performance motors, brushless motors that run off lithium batteries, all that kind of stuff is present day remote control hobby grade stuff. Today's show is gonna be talking to you guys about vintage okay, remote control stuff that is consumer grade. Now this is the stuff that if you go to Toys R Us back in the day or Kmart or Target or any of those, you're going to find this type of stuff in those places. So I'm going to talk about two brands of vintage um, remote control stuff. And hopefully with just with that, you should kind of have an idea of like, okay, when I see this at a garage sale or the thrift store, I'll remember Bonafide's video. That's what it all comes down to. Okay. It's about teaching. And like I said, if you do like this kind of video, um, then we're going to be doing a little bit more of these lifestyle where I can interact with you guys better. And uh, yeah, so um, what's going on? It's good to see everyone. David Nichols, um, Apple Pear. Uh, we'll get to that on another video, New Bright RC Cars. So like New Bright is a consumer grade remote control car company, which is pretty much terrible. I wouldn't be buying any of it except for the crawler bodies that are found on their Wrangler. Usually the Wrangler crawler bodies are pretty good hustles, just the body itself. And then if you've managed to find like the really big 1.6 scale, or maybe it's a 1.8 scale grave digger with lights and sounds in the gigantic box, that still goes for pretty good money on Amazon FBA or eBay as well. But for the most part, I would stay 
way clear of New Bright. I just don't, they don't make good stuff. So New Bright uh, RC are very basic. Yeah, it, it's just not good. So um, we got 22 live viewers here. I tell you what, if there's any way that you guys can share this video, I greatly appreciate it. But quite honestly, just by you guys commenting out there, that already spreads it in your feeds as well. So maybe more people can come into this video. We can learn more. Okay, so... Um, and then we have a remark from Joy Beer. Old Losi and HPI parts are I've done amazing off of. Okay, so let's just clarify this for the, for the very last time. Today on this show, we're going to be talking about vintage consumer grade remote control. I'm going to break it down to two brands that you should just be looking for. You know, items from these two brands. We'll see if we can decipher that uh, for you guys out there. Okay, so. I'm going to attempt a screen share here. This is like my first time ever. I did a kind of like a dry run through before, but we'll see if this works. Um, and then I'll get you to my main screen here, and then we can start talking about these remote control car stuff. So bear with me with the screen share. If it serves me correctly, let me make sure this other thing is on the Nico RC search thing. We're going to be going through a bunch of Google images, maybe a little, maybe a little bit of eBay, and uh, that should be it. So... All right, here goes. Attempting the screen share in the Bonafide Space Station office. Um, let's see here. Should we do it that way or this way? Okay, I think it's going to work this way. Let me make sure. 100%. Hold on. Okay, it looks like I'm back. See, this is the reason why we drew, do dry run-throughs. Hopefully you guys can see me. Let me make sure this thing is minimized so it doesn't interrupt with everything. Sorry, guys. Okay, and then let me make sure you guys can see me here. Make sure we're good to go. Okay, there we go. So hopefully you guys are still watching me. Sorry about the crash and burn kind of stuff. Let me get into this uh, Google images thing. And then I will pull up the vintage Nico stuff. I'll get better at this, I promise. So, you know, everything starts from somewhere. And then we'll be good. Okay, good. Thanks, Ben H. I think we're good to go. Live feedback up. And make sure I'm X'd out there. Okay. So, now I'm going to attempt to screen share this one screen here, which I think is this one. Yeah. Here, start the screen share. Okay, so let's see if you can see my mouse going on. Okay, I'm pointing at this one. Okay, so hopefully you guys can still see this thing. And um, let me talk to you guys about a little bit of what's going on here. Here I have in Google Images Vintage Nico. So let's hope you guys can see that part. If you guys can see this, these buggies on the screen and all that kind of stuff, let's just let's say, yes, I can see it. And then I'll just start talking, okay? You probably won't be able to see me, but I'll talk behind the scenes. Um, can you guys see? Oh, it looks like you guys can. Are you sure? You can see the buggies and the cars. Can you see this? You can see the red one in the corner, right? Top left, red buggy in the corner, right? Let's just make sure we're all on the same exact thing. Yep. Someone just give me a heads up and I will start this show. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Thanks, guys. Hey, what's up, Vargas girls and daddy? Good to see you guys. Okay, so basic thing, vintage Nico RC. I want you guys to study this general theme right here, okay? Because as we have it right here, these are the, what vintage buggies look like, right? They have suspension in the back, suspension in the front, and this is what's classified as a buggy. Typically on vintage RC buggies, you're going to see a little bar right here and a really, really wide bumper because when kids are messing with this thing, they want, you know, when they crash it into like curbs and stuff, they want to make sure that the kids don't just break the entire car into pieces. So it usually spans further past these wheels right here okay this bumper is very wide let's take another shot from this buggy as you can see the bumper is very wide so that's kind of an indicative thing already of a uh you know a buggy from back in the day right and uh this one it happens to be a nico so we're talking about nikos and tycos um the battery pack for usually the good kind of buggies are going to be this right here 
which if memory serves me correct, it's like a six cell battery uh, goes into here. Uh, the voltage, maybe 7.2 of this serves me correct as well. Um, and this is, you know, kind of like what you want to be looking for when it comes to buggies, okay? In Nico or Tyco. So let's, let's break it down a little bit more. As you can see, here's one. I think it's a different one, different uh, image and everything. See, wide bumper right here, um, all that kind of stuff. So that's a Nico Evolution. And um, here's another one right here. This one is looks more like a, no, this is a Tamiya, but I swear they make a Tyco one like this one as well. This, this is probably a Nico, actually. This, not, this doesn't look like a Tamiya for some reason. does not to me. Anyway, uh, very wide bumper, all right? And uh, we have the same kind of style right there. Okay, so that's that one. And as you can see, back in the day, they came in packages kind of like this. You're likely never to find it in this package ever, in these boxes or anything like that. So they have proportional control steering. What that means is like uh, every incremental little notch that you press up on the throttle, it'll go faster. It doesn't like, it's not like it only has two speeds going forward. It's got incremental speeds and proportional control also means that, uh, you know, when you do left and right, um, if you do it just a little bit left, then the car will go a little bit left. But if you hook it really tough to the left or the right, then it'll do a much tighter circle. So that's what proportional control means. Um, you always want to be looking for the buggies that have, you know, forward, back, left, and right. I would stay away from anything that does uh, just forward, and then when you press back, it goes into it like a little turn. Like, you just don't want to mess with those. So you also want to look for buggies that are about one-tenth scale as well. So um, this is on an average size table, as you can see. A one-tenth scale is about that big. When it comes down to it, it's about... Uh, a little bit bigger than a sheet of paper. So that, there's a little reference for you guys out there when you find it in the wild. All right, so let's look at some more buggies. Here's another buggy right here. It's a Nico Rhino. Um, proportional control, 7.2 volt, six cell battery right there. Uh, typically, if you want to find them and test them out, you're going to need this kind of wall. Um, it's like a wall plug, but it has a different kind of end to it that'll go directly to one of these things. And then that thing goes into here, which is the buggy put a nine volt battery into here or sometimes uh, four to six double A's depending on which one it is. And then um, you put that battery into this thing and uh, it should work. But regardless if it works or not, you can say untested on eBay and you could still get away with it and totally sell a buggy for some good money. Let's look at another one. There you go. As you can see, very, uh, this is a, not a Lobo. Uh, this is a Lobo because there's the wolf thing. So this is a super Lobo probably. Um, and uh, it's just, you know, it's got that wide bumper. Oops. Whoa. What just happened there? So let me get out of this thing. So there's the wide bumper and everything like that. It's classified under Sears, but let me tell you this. This is definitely on Nico. I can tell you this right now. So Nico probably did business with Sears back in the day, and that's what it was. As you can see, wide bumper up front to protect, you know, the, the front wheels. And then uh, that's that. So, and then I think this one right here, when you're going over rocks and stuff like that, this semi protects um, the car in this sense right here, in this one area. And I think with a rollover, it helps a little bit too. But anyway, um, here's what a Lobo, what when I was back in the when I had one back in the day it looked like this. So here's a Lobo two. These are just collector. These are pretty much collector's items at this point. A really good Lobo with a remote control. You're looking like a hundred bucks plus. And there's a Lobo again. Suspension a little different on this one versus the other ones. As you can see, suspension back here, suspension right here on this one. As you can see, front bumper spanning over the two wheels. So that's definitely one of those things that you can start looking for when it comes to Nico buggies and. Here's something interesting too. Let me go back to my live show. Make sure you guys are learning something. Are you guys learning something right here? If you are, why don't you make sure to hit the like button and uh, we're going to be talking more about this kind of stuff. So new inbox, Adam Line, we're talking to some serious money. You're looking at 200 plus, usually on some good ones. Okay, so are we learning some stuff, yes or no? Remember, if you like these kind of videos, I'm going to do more for them, okay? Maybe I'll do some evening shows for you guys as well. But uh, I have such a, you know, I love finding this stuff. It's very hard to find, but I love looking for it. And if I can find it every now and then, there's no reason why I can't spread this wealth out to you guys as well. So when you're at a thrift store or you're at a garage sale and you see one of these things, I want you to remember the Bonafide Hustler told you what is up and put money in your pocket. That's right, Ben H. Hell yeah, we are learning it up. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Ben H. Slowly becoming my best friend on this episode. <laughs> okay, let's go back into this uh, screen share. 
And uh, I'll show you. I mean, I look at these pictures and I'm like, man, I've hustled that. I've hustled that. I've hustled this one. Here's one I have hustled before, one like this. This one has a winch that comes out the front. Pretty cool. Um, it's just a normal. This is a little bit less than a one-tenth. If I remember correctly, these are like way, way, uh, maybe one-twelfth or something like that. A little bit smaller than normal. But still has all the controls possible, four by four. Anything Nico. Um, here's the controller you can see right there. Anything Nico. I'm pointing right to the Nico thing. Yeah, we can look at this uh, page, but I don't, sometimes the page gets all, gets all spammy and stuff. Here we go. So high and low gear on some of these vintage remote control cars. In fact, a lot of them will have high and low back here. And then there's a little winch thing that comes out the front of this guy, for example. You can see it right there. So it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty nice one. To find it in this condition, you're doing pretty well. Um, I recently hustled one kind of like this. These are Nico trucks. These are not to be confused with buggies. Now these are trucks. Some of those trucks will have bumpers that span the tires and some will not okay um but the four-wheel drive thing back in the truck days uh it's just a real big thing and people love these big spongy tires even present day you can probably sell this guy alone for about 80 to 120 if it had the remote control with it not original box blah 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 i mean you could probably get about that much because it's got that old look to it you know it's like an old bronco almost and then we have this guy right here smaller version more like a ranger i guess but uh you know still spongy nice rubber spongy tires not hard crappy plastic ones like present day ones but nice spongy rubber tires and um it's got the winch coming out which is a little cool feature the winch is now hooked up to the bumper as you can see right here and to the brush guard so that's 1987 right there. So yeah, serious money in that stuff, guys. Don't don't play around. Let's talk about some other stuff that's going on with vintage Nico. Um, this is one I want to. So when you're identifying vintage Nico, some might look like this, and they make the mascot, the hurricane, all these other ones. Um, I believe there should be a, a bumper on this one. I don't know why the bumper's gone on this, but. Um, Essentially, there's a little bar that you can see right there. Now, that basically, the motor is in the back of this car, and this bar right here will power the front differential based upon the power out of the rear motor. There's some bars on these some of these cars. So I'll tell you, we'll look into the, I think the Hurricane's got the bar, and I'll, I want to show you a couple things. That's Here we go. A Super Fox four-wheel drive. You know, a lot of things about Nico back in the day, they would uh, just make the same exact car, different body, and just call it something different. So here's a Super Fox, and they have a Hurricane, all this kind of stuff. But here's that torsion, here's that uh, driveline bar that you can see right there, okay? It's taking power to the front wheel, so it effectively makes it a four-wheel drive, as you can see. All right. So if you pick up a buggy from a thrift store or a garage sale, you flip it over and you start seeing this bar right here. I mean, start lighting up, right? If you can find the remote control with it, here's one that's more of an upright remote control, right? Um, I mean, get really excited. It doesn't matter if the wings popped off or what, man. People are dying to have parts for these cars. Um, they have broken cars and they're just dying to have like a wheel, a part, the torsion, any, any of this stuff. They're just dying to have parts. But if you can find it intact like this, which I have a couple times in my life, um, you can get some serious, serious money for it. All right. Um, the back of the cars, as you can see, here's one with the, it's a Super Fox. You can see the bar right there. You can barely see it. But anyway, there it is. Um, let me look up the Hurricane. I have hustled a Hurricane back in the day. That was pretty cool. It's like totally mint. So look at the hurricane there it is so i have hustled one of these i found it at actually at a thrift store for five bucks i forgot what it's sold for but yeah as you can see it's real cool see the bar right there there's the little four-wheel drive bar to the front differential real wild looking car another picture of it right there i found it in like this condition right here well this internet's like kind of ridiculous but um i found it in perfect condition like just like this now you can see the front bumper spanning across both wheels blah 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 and there we go. Now, these are the kind of cars that you cannot get into this top part, usually if you're a kiddo. But when you flip it over, then that's where the battery, you know, goes and everything like that. This isn't a hurricane, but this is, or maybe it is. Um, the battery goes in like right here, and it ends up going sideways like that. So once you put it in, usually the, the battery is like sideways. Here's a connector for the battery. This is the part that if the car goes left or right, you know, like it's not tracking straight. It has a little tracking thing right there. Um, but for the most part, or maybe the tracking thing is here, either one. Um, you can you can adjust certain things on these cars so there's that if you do happen to get the the top off which you should not be doing on consumer grade remote control stuff then it would look like this and the esc and all this stuff and all the you know random stuff in the mabuchi motor the probably a 540 mabuchi motor in the back um drives the front right here as you can see there's no motor up here right but it's receiving power and traction to this front line of wheels right here through those bars 
There you go. There's some education for you guys. All right, so let's go back to uh, truck, for example. We, we went through the buggy. We'll go through buggy real quick. Make sure you guys are fully educated on this. Um, Dictator's lit. It's starting to get a little bit more current. Not current day, but this is like retro to me. Here's vintage. Like all these look vintage. You know, you can see it down to like the actual netting on the, you know, the small details, like the netting on the uh, roll cage right here. Pretty cool. Um, you know, this is what a buggy looked like back in the day. Remote control car buggy. All right. So we got that going on. What else do I want to show you? Here's more current day one. I just don't like these current day ones at all. Um, once you actually depress and compress these wheels with your fingers, you'll, you'll realize this is not like real rubber. This is like junk, total junk rubber. So this right here has no resale. It looks more current day. It's got stupid stickers on it. It looks just like, it looks stupid. It doesn't look right, right? Um, you want to be looking for things that look like this, okay? Like that style, Dictator. I've, I've hustled one of those too, brand, like basically mint. Here's one right here, a one-tenth, okay? Here's someone's collection of Tycos and Nikos. Boom, right there. We'll be getting into that soon. And there you go. All right, so that's pretty much it. Remember, look for this, look for that, look for that style, look for not that style. That looks like stupid, but still probably has a little bit of resale. But for the most part, you know, these are the kind of styles you want to be looking for proportional control um yeah this is like retro right here when you depress these tires i guarantee you they're gonna be nice and rubbery so um you know nice and rubbery tires bumper that spans the entire front um you know really cool weird weird graphics and retro stuff then yeah you probably want to be getting interested you want to be interested for sure okay so that takes care of that um, i'm gonna go back into the show comments right here and read some How's the sell if you found one without the remote? It's okay, but it's usually about half the value. Um, yeah, good to look for battery battery swelling as well. That's right. If the battery swells, I mean, it's not the game over kind of thing. I mean, look, a lot of these cars, it's really hard to destroy them. It really was. Even if you run them past, they can't run past red line. They really can't. So they can overheat a little bit. But for the most part, most of these that you find will, about 80% of them will work. Um, it will be saved for later. Yes, the video, by the way. Um, let me talk to another comment right here. Missing the remote, but other than that, complete and never build. I live one town over from Bonafide, so I don't mind flipping the RC. <laughs> cool. Okay, uh, you guys can still see the video, right? Yes or no? I'm going to wait for the yes, then we'll go into uh, vintage trucks for Nico, and I'll show you what to look for. But I want to make sure that this uh, show is going well. And that we, you guys are seeing exactly what I'm seeing. Okay. Make sure. And there are there other comments here. Sorry. All right. There's a little bit of a delay. So, okay, good. Timothy Grapp. Where do you source these, Ben H? Uh, anywhere. Garage sales, estate sales, um, thrift stores. Uh, yeah, things like that. I mean, I wouldn't say mostly any one of those. It just seems like equally I would find them at, you know, places like that. So. All right, let's go into Nico Trucks. I'm trying to keep it really simple for you guys out there. Trucks. Cool. All right, so this is a little bit, to me, this is more retro. Here's more current day. This thing sucks. If you do, like, tried to, uh, you know, depress the tires with your hands, you'd realize these are very hard plastic kind of tires. So, no, skip out on this one. You want to be looking for things like this. All right, old truck body, right? Big, spongy, rubber wheels. This thing would command about... 180 plus on eBay with or probably without the controller. I mean, these are just really nice trucks. Um, what else do we got here? I'm trying to look around. I have hustled one of these before. These are really hard to find. Um, usually, like the lights will be broken off or something like that, or the bumper one part will be broken off. Don't fear, just still listed. These are nice spongy tires as well. Um, as you can see, it starts off, you know, if you want to start off your what should I look for? I would look for the first thing is the old truck body right here. This one looks to be maybe an old Toyota, okay? Like a Toyota truck. And some of them, like this one right here. I don't know if that's a Toyota or not, but maybe. Anyway, so yeah, see this one has something broken off right there. But you want to be looking for things like that. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing, that big long bumper, yeah, it's probably going to be there, but sometimes it's not. People get kind of crazy on these. So here's the one with the winch. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. It's called a sand bully. I have sold one of these for about 80 bucks with a controller. This thing is tough, man. I'm telling you, this is one of the toughest little micro cars. As you can see, one of the lights is broken off right there. So you are likely to find these, yes, but not in perfect condition. So here's another one, um, you know, 
pretty cool old truck body some have these wild looking things coming out the side but this is going to be commanding around you know with the remote control 100 bucks plus all day and um i've hustled this one before right there in fact i probably i think i sold one of these like recently in the past like five months so you want to be looking for things like that and that's how you kind of dict you know figure out like Here's a more current day, like F-150 looking body or something weird. This would still be worth a little bit, but you got to be, you know, this is where you start getting kind of weary, right? It's got this weird fin and it doesn't look right, but um, I, you want to think twice about that one. Um, we have other ones. Let me see if something rings my bell here. I have hustled this one, the Wild Willies or Wild Horse, whatever it's called. Um, I have hustled this twice over, actually. One I found in North Carolina, the other one I found in Austin. Um, big long bumper, crazy things like flying all over this truck, blowers, stupid, just little over the top. Usually the back of these are going to have a high and low gear, nice spongy tires. And, uh, that's kind of how you figure that part out. Um, what else? Here's one right here. I'd still pop on this, um, wild colors, you know, just spongy tires for sure. I know I'd pop on these all day. So that's what you want to be looking for that kind of truck old truck body spongy tires um i see so many here that i've actually um like flipped it's kind of crazy so there we go um that's pretty easy i mean to uh see them you don't want to be messing with things like this that look weird you can tell the tires are not spongy on this one looks cool just no no resale you know um here spongy tires yeah this one probably command about 40 to 60 but as you get to the old stuff that's where you really want to be looking these old trucks and stuff like that. Some of them are going to be bigger than normal. Some of them are going to be a little smaller, like, uh, like the one with the tow hitch and everything like that. So that's that part. Let's go into, uh, Tyco. Now Tyco is not really known for their trucks. Remember, I was going to talk to you guys about two brands, Tyco and Nico. So let's go to vintage Tyco. Let's see, because there's going to be so much to talk about right here. All right, so Tyco is really more well, more or less known for their wild colors and stuff, like lightning bolts and all kinds of crazy graphics. So let's take it from the top. Number one, I mean, there really isn't a number one thing to look for. I would say if there was a number one thing to look for, you're going to want to look for this guy, the Bandit. This one eludes me to this day. I've never found one, um, and, and I've never found one, period. So this is like my ultimate unicorn find of all time. I wish I could find one of these. So that's a 9.6 V. This is when this is where the era of remote control, I want to say this is like the late 80s or mid 80s where stuff got really fast, even for kids. So it's cool looking based upon a pickup, Nissan pickup. I mean, just a really rad. This is a mini bandit more than likely. This doesn't look like the full size one, but there's a mini bandit and then there's a full size bandit. There you go. 9.6 V. So a lot more power now going to these and they're relatively pretty fast. Big bandit versus little bandit, as you can see. And uh, here's a controller for the little bandit. It's a crappy controller. It would still command some money, probably 50 to maybe 70 bucks. But what you're looking for is really the bigger one. Okay. So the one looks like that. That is a very, very good hustle to find, okay? If you find a bandit, comes in a couple different colors, um, but yeah, very hard to find. But then again, with this video spreading all the way out in the USA, I'm pretty sure someone's gonna find one. Um, let me go into the comments real quick, see what's going on. Um, 80s graphics for sure, that's right. So that's kind of like the big thing you wanna start looking for with Tyco and their 80s graphics. I mean, it just is amazing. So let's go back into Tyco RC truck. It usually should just be mostly bandit stuff. So a lot of bandits, um, they were just known for the bandit back in the day. Um, that was like the main thing you want to be looking for. Uh, maybe this eliminator thing right here. Anytime you see Tyco RC 9.6 V turbo, anytime you see that, get really excited because this stuff is hard to find. Okay. Really, really hard to find. Here's a super bandit, which is pretty hard to find, but I don't think it, I really think the normal bandit probably has a better market. And here's a red bandit right here in the, oh my God. Like seriously, this is getting me really excited just looking at this picture. Anyway, um, okay, so that takes care of the trucks. The other thing I want to teach you guys about is the fast tracks. This thing is awesome, uh, straight up. So here's a remote control that goes into your hands. As you can see, the scale of this thing is pretty monstrous. It looks like a stealth fighter with some tracks. Now, typically, the tracks are going to have some wear and tear. If you find it by now, you can get replacement tracks, yes. But if you're just down to hustle and resell this thing, you can sell it even in effed up condition, okay? You can sell it without the tracks. 
you can sell it you know broken people want these things left and right this is what a complete package kind of looks like um, this looks like a more current day battery system but here i mean a current day battery and charger but this is the actual fast track itself and um comes in a box like this they do make a mini one i want to say if it serves me correctly there's a mini fast tracks and a full size fast tracks so here's the mini one i guess or this is a this is a um i think this is a sorry this is a slot car race maybe kind of thing this one but i know there's a mini i swear there's a mini one they make a bandit kind of in the fast tracks kind of thing it doesn't matter which fast tracks you get as long as it's the rc you know 9.6 v turbo one you're looking at something like this serious serious money and there they are right there so they're really cool looking i mean one of my uh i guess dreams is to find the more pink one which i guess is this the color looks kind of off but yeah this is very very hard to find stuff the closest i i have hustled to fast tracks before but the closest i ever came to actually finding a very good one with a controller was actually when i walked up into the goodwill way and pay about three years ago i was walking right up and there was a dude that was walking right out with one of these and one of those in his hands and i was like are you serious so you know by paying by the pound at that place it was like a dollar 48 so i can only imagine what this guy paid for that thing so yes and the more wild colors the more rare ones are going to command more money as you can see right here remember how i told you about a sheet of paper right it, you know a sheet of paper is eight and a half by eleven right so one tenth is typically right around 13 inches as you can see if you were to find this in the wild and you're starting to go is this a full size one tenth see this is pretty much what I was talking about. A sheet of paper would end up about right right here. It's a little bit larger than a sheet of paper is what you want to be looking for. Okay, I'm going to go into the feed, see if you guys are looking, or if you guys are, uh, sorry, if you guys are learning some stuff. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah, those treads are sick. They're pretty cool. Uh, Jory Beer, that's for another show. To me, as a holy grail of RC if it's vintage, you're right. That's a whole different show for these peeps. You are on top of your game. Do I collect them for myself or do I sell all of them? Honestly, Timothy, I have, I sell every piece of the vintage ones that I find, but I am waiting to find a bandit and I'm waiting to find a fast tracks to keep for myself. Absolutely. But let me tell you, man, I'm teaching you guys this because it's all about the knowledge. Just like Ty Lopez says, here in my garage, went to, I got these Ferraris behind me, but you know what's more important than money and cars? Knowledge. That's what it's all about, guys. So um, there is the fast tracks. Now you guys know about the fast tracks. Let's talk about vintage Tyco slot cars is for a different um, thing. But um, the other one you want to look for are the hoppers, which are their buggies. So I can just do this. And most of the hoppers will probably start coming through. Um, let me just see if I can find a picture of one. Here's one. Turbo Hopper RC. Commands over 100 bucks all day with a remote control. It's kind of cool. So you press up on the remote control, and then there's like a little turbo button that if you press it really high up, it'll go really fast. So it's very neat. Um, here it is again. There's a turbo hopper by Tayo or Tyco. really don't matter. So as you can see, there's a, uh, you know, they usually have a little switch back here too that's like for high and low gear. I'm surprised I'm not seeing it on that one. Here's the high and low gear switch on that one. Actually, you can see it on this one right here. So yeah, that's what you're looking for. Uh, that's kind of like the indicative thing. Spongy tires, bumper that spans the, you know, the front wheel kind of thing. It's got that buggy look to it. And then that high low gear in the back, boom. You know, you got yourself a good one. Now they even made it into a slot car. I think this is the slot car one. Well, if you find this, this is still worth some good money. It's real small. I'm talking this is like fit in your hand because this is for a slot car. You can see the rails that make contact with this track right here. So that's that. Um, here are some of the ones that, yeah, these are iffy, right? These will command about 20 to 40 bucks. But the ones that see this ruler right here, this is definitely not one tenth. Okay, this is like a mini hopper. So it's from like here to maybe eight inches. You can take a stab at these if you find them for dirt cheap. I'm talking like a one or two box. If you find the controller, yeah, maybe go up to five. But you could probably post this on uh, eBay for about, uh, you know, somewhere between 30 and 60. You'll probably sell that thing. What you're really looking for, guys, is absolutely the turbo hopper. The one right there. That's a good one to find right there. It comes in two different colors. You want to be looking for that one. Um, another one, a note here. This is not... Tyco or Nico, but since I saw a picture of it right here, I've probably hustled about five or six of these in my life. Um, and they come in varying conditions, usually completely busted up. But I have found a mint one before. I think I sold it for like 80 bucks. This one, the Radio Shack. I say it's Tyco. This is Radio Shack all day. Um, Radio Shack, Golden Arrow. 
um, is a pretty interesting buggy that has a pretty big cult following. It just, I don't know, doesn't really perform that well, but uh, people seem to really like this one right there. So, you know, look out for that one. Golden Arrow, you'll probably find more than any one of these right here. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's what, uh, you know, the hopper looks like right there. Nothing crazy, but I tell you, nothing crazy to you. But when you put it out there on the market, crazy money, good stuff. So just scrolling through to see if there's anything else I want to talk to you guys about on that kind of stuff. Oh man, just looking through these buggies just gets me really, really pumped up. So, um, yeah. And here's someone's collection about mini hoppers. And so they got like the normal hopper right here. They got this weirdo thing, but it's probably still worth some money. Here's a Typhoon, which is maybe arguably 9.6 V. And then some of these mini ones right here. Um, the other one I want to talk to you guys about real quick is a uh, vintage nine. Let's look at this real quick. 9.6 V. These other cars. So now uh, here it is. Uh, yeah. Let me just find a better picture. 9.6 V Lamborghini. So this one has twin Mabuchi motors in it. It has two motors in the back, fast as hell, 9.6V turbo, very hard to find. I have actually found two of these in my life, though. One was completely like busted up and everything, sold for really good money. The other one was still kind of messed up. I was able to test it out, sold for really good money. So I found a red one on both cases. But there you go. This thing is a unicorn find of all time. Very hard to find this thing. Comes in a box like this. It's a 9.6V turbo Kuntak, but it also was made in i think a ferrari as well so it is pretty cool it's got this weird little bumper thing right here there are two mabuchi motors in this car if it serves me correct they should be two 540 size motors and uh, they are mabuchi motors so when i found mine i found it broken with a wing off and everything like this it's got really wide tires in the back but it should look like this if it was stock right should have two mirrors and the wing and all that kind of stuff, but likely you're gonna find it like kind of busted up. These things are fast, I'm not even kidding. They're really, really, really cool. And the tires are super wide on the back. So you wanna look out for that one. There's also another one called, there was a Ferrari, I wanna say, that was made, that was 9.6 V. Uh, I saw it in a couple of videos too, maybe it's this one. Yeah, so I think it could be this one. Tyco, Tyco yellow Ferrari 9.6 V, it's like, a you know, 348, it's got that, this is the controller for the 9.6 Vs back in the day, it has a silver wheel. And right here is the car, just as fast as that Lamborghini, it just doesn't look as cool. So resale value on the Lamborghini is just really strong. That one's okay. Um, here's another picture of the Lamborghini. It's just a beautiful car, period. I mean, it is awesome. Um, while we're at it, let's talk to you guys about, uh, there's one called, uh, I think it's called an Outlaw. Be cool learn this one too very hard to find it intact you're likely to find it in this condition right here super hard to find car this is what it looks like okay and when you put it together it should look like this more like a dirt oval kind of dirt car very very hard to find 9.6 feet controller with the silver wheel right there it's called a turbo outlaw this thing just to, to this day still eludes me like in good condition so um it's just beautiful these are awesome cars once you get them i'm telling you you, you really at this point, you probably command the market because if you've got something this nice and this good condition, you can ask pretty much what you want for it. Um, some collector out there is going to go bonkers when they see this thing. Okay, so that's that. The very last thing. Uh, you, you guys want to see one more thing? Yes or no? Let me make sure that everyone's watching here. Bargain Hunter, <laughs> you're my sex. <laughs> oh, Steven Seagal. Anyway, that's pretty funny. Um, going through these comments man i love talking about this crap I like this is like literally an effortless show for me but i love love doing this yeah jory beer we are going to get into it man maybe you and i can do a show together because uh you know i can tell you got this uh you love talking about this stuff so um maybe me and jory beer hit me up on facebook maybe we can do a uh a uh, little rc live thing for the peeps so Okay, one last thing, Ben H. Yes. Hey, by the way, guys, got 31 people watching right now. Let me re refresh this thing real quick to see who obeyed Bonafide Hustler in liking the video. And looks like we got 15 people that are my friend. And I still got 16 people who aren't my friend. Shame on you people. Okay, last thing I want to show you guys. You're probably not going to find this in good condition, but I want to uh, discuss it with you anyway. The Typhoon. 
It's the hovercraft that Tyco made back in the day. It comes in a box like this. They got big Typhoon and mini Typhoon. So 9.6 feet turbo is probably the big one. There it is. Comes in a box like that. Now look at these graphics back in the day. This thing is like racing, man. Talk about a bona fide spaceship. This is awesome. And then there's mini Typhoon as well, which looks more like this, I think. Yeah, there's a mini Typhoon. There's a controller, and it's significantly smaller. These things sound kind of crazy when they power up. They are all the rage if you get them working. However, likely you got to make sure that see, it travels on a little thin thing of air, and it's really awesome. The big typhoon, uh, that's the one right there. You're going to want to make, usually when you find them now, this underskirt, okay, the rubber underskirt is going to be kind of torn up. I have never seen one that wasn't torn up. So here it is. I think it's inflated in this picture. So this is deflated. Here's it powered up right there. As you can see, it goes on water, um, flat land, and... Uh, yeah, these, I mean, here's the underside of the mini and then the two big ones. Usually, this is pretty torn up, usually, okay? Um, but huge cult following for that guy. Huge cult following for this thing, too, by the way. I forgot to mention this one, but if you ever see this guy. Um, but yeah, the Typhoon is a big, big deal um, if you can find it. Now, you can find it broken, untested, whatever, throw it up on there. I mean, I'm telling you, you will still make money on the Typhoon hovercraft. But if you find it in perfect condition, I found a mini Typhoon, I'm not even kidding, from the Salvation Army for like $7 in its box, just like this, not torn up, whatever, a mini, not a full-size one, but a mini, and it still sold for good money. So, uh, you know, they exist out there, but likely pff, you're not going to find a full-size Typhoon that is, uh, <laughs> that's going to have the skirt intact, just like, it's pretty much impossible. Battery goes up here in this part, um, here are the motors, here's the main fan, and this kind of steers it around. It's really cool to play around with, I got to tell you. Um, but the battery goes in right here and it's using the 9.6 V pack, which is kind of, you know, anytime you see the 9.6 V kind of thing, let's, uh, I'll just show you what the battery looks like. So 9.6 V batteries, I think this is it. Yeah. They look like this most of the time. So whether it's Tyco or Nico, you're going to be looking at that. You're going to need a charger like this, like a wall charger, just to charge it up. If you find an old battery, I mean, it might hold charge for like maybe 30 seconds. I mean, usually the old batteries don't. They're NICAD, nickel, uh, cadmium, um, or some are nickel metal hydrides. So uh, probably not going to work, uh, but that's okay. Um, if you find a good enough, if you get, find one at a garage sale, you might find two or three of these in one. You just need it to test out, right? You're not looking to play with it and blow it up, right? So there's some fast track stuff. Oh man, I can get carried away right here. So I just want to let you guys know about that typhoon boom 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 very cool start looking for it remember when you're looking at vintage rc kind of stuff guys you can really do really good things with the market and you can make really good money and it can be broken untested don't be afraid to um you know put untested i'm telling you right now i do untested on so many things on ebay and i don't get any returns or any of that junk so yeah, hard to drive. <laughs> You're right, Joy Beer. The, the Typhoon is super cool, but it is kind of a wacky thing to drive. Um, usually when I drive these things around, when I find them, if I ever do, it's like the battery only lasts like a, maybe a minute because, yeah. So there you go. Um, I'm going to get back out of this screenshot. I mean, the screen sharing thing here. Stop. Let's go back to Bonafide's face. Hopefully it works. There. I did it. Dude, I did it. I can't believe it. My first screen share show. And uh, it's live right now, but I tell you what, if you're watching it after the fact, guys, um, where am I looking? If you're watching it after the fact, guys, then probably not going to be live. But we had a pretty good turnout in the show just for a, a spur of the moment day show. So if you guys want more of these, you know, I call them kind of like they're whim shows. Like I just do it on a whim. And uh, talking about this stuff comes very naturally to me. So we can do you know, we can talk about all kinds of bona fide things. I don't care. But uh, these screen share shows are kind of fun. I want to start including them more into my broadcasts. Uh, one thing I want to tell you guys about real quick is if you do want to learn about some really cool, interesting items to flip, not just RC related, I want you to take a look down below in the description and get our 100 amazing items to resell guide. It's it's for free. We created it in the green room. It's for free. Check it out. People on Periscope are grabbing it up left and right. I'm telling you guys right now, it's a great guide to help you get through the January through November months, you know, before fourth quarter and FBA hits. I mean, we all want to make good money. I'm telling you right now, this guide was made by four very good expert hustlers, and we put a lot of good information into it. It's free. It's down below. There.
So um, if you guys enjoyed this show, tell me right now that you liked it. I mean, I can see 23 people out of 30. So I got seven enemies out there that absolutely hate the Bonafide Hustler. I'm just kidding. Um, and, uh, you know, let's we can talk about more remote control car stuff. I was thinking about building a guide at one point, but these, like, screen share shows are really fun. I, I mean, I say that like I have experience doing it, but I don't. But I've always wanted to. And so if you're finding any kind of value in this or if you find yourself after this show finding a remote control car kind of thing or a truck or a hovercraft or fast tracks or whatever, dude, hit me up on Bonafide Hustler Facebook and show me a picture of this stuff. I have had numerous people that have showed me amazing, amazing hustles that they have found because of, you know, just information I gave, I divulged in some previous, previous videos. So um, some things are just mind blowing. I'm talking people find, going up in their attic and finding toys that they had when they were a kid and not even knowing that the parents kept them and it's an original packaging. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So that's what I'm talking about. It's all about spreading the wealth and the knowledge out there. Knowledge and uh, getting you guys educated on uh, basically a free dime right now. So um, I, there's so much more I want to talk to you guys about. There really is. But I thought this would be a pretty good thing for a spur of the moment kind of broadcast. If you did enjoy it, the last thing you can do, hit the like button. And then uh, that'll be it. I'm going to do another one of these shows sometime soon. Don't forget about that free guide down below. And I'll talk to you guys on the next Bonafide Hustler show. Everyone in the comment feed, thanks for being so cool. And if you watch this after the fact, then uh, you know, put a cool comment down below. Make sure you hit the like button and uh, you know where to find me when you find that awesome remote control haul or car or truck or whatever. Hit me up on Facebook before you sell it. I'll help you appraise it and all that junk. And then uh, together we'll make some more money for the future. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you soon.